for this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, yes, um, Sarah Lee Hall, Hall Let me start off a little bit because my situation is a little bit different than here in, in, in Europe and in North America. Um, so I'm going to do a little bit more introduction than I might have otherwise. Um, let me introduce myself. Um, yes, my name is Lee Ramadotter. I've lived in Mexico for nine years. I went over in 2003 for only two years and somehow I'm still there. Um, you, you meet a lot of foreigners in Mexico that, uh, that have the same story. Usually it involves someone of the opposite sex, um, or in my case, both that and the fact that um, actually my master's in English is better valued in Mexico than it is in the United States. Um, <laughs> I've been working for the same uh, system, which is called uh, the Tech de Monterrey, or uh, actually it has a very long, yeah, let me go into this. Instituto Tecnológico de Estudios Superiores de Monterrey, uh, short, short Tech de Monterrey, or just Tech, it has some, sometimes gets used as well. Um, this is a, uh, uh, actually it's a high school slash university system. It's private. It has 31 installations. Most of them have the title campus, but not all of them, in various parts of Mexico. Um, most of them are in the central Mexico area, Mexico City, and surrounding. However, it was uh, established in the city of Monterrey, which is in the north. It focuses mostly on technology and engineering because when it was founded in 1949, the public universities were not producing engineers that actually could do the jobs that the industrialists needed. It is based on the U.S. Uh, educational system with some modifications, and in, then that U.S. base includes American football. Uh, yes, it was very freaky for me to go on a campus in Mexico and not only see guys in the shoulder pads and the helmets and everything, but cheerleaders as well. <laughs> and I was just going, no, this is just wrong, wrong, wrong. <laughs> Since then, I've never really gotten used to it. I've just learned how to avoid it. <laughs> um, English is a required course for all students. They are supposed to get a certain level on a standardized test called the TOEFL in order to graduate. That varies between 520 and 550 for any of you that know what that means, but basically it is the level that was needed in order to be able to enter university in the US or Canada. Um, so, a um, couple things that, we, uh, uh, that I'll talk about some differences in the system. It is a university system, but university systems do not always work like they do in Europe and in the UK, and a couple of these things have come up. Uh, these differences have come up in our work with Wikipedia here. Okay. How do I go this? Ah, there we go. All right. Annie uh, has talked a lot about what I'm going to call the classic Wikipedia assignment. Okay. Uh, basically, you have a course content, psychology, political science, whatever, and then you're going to write or work on articles related to the course content. And for most of you, that's probably going to be the case. However, there are uh, instances where this may not work very well. Uh, how many of you teach foreign language, second language? Anybody here with me? OK, good. What do you teach? Uh, I just teach English for academic purposes. OK, OK. So this, would, this sort of will apply to you as well. All right. So of course, when you're teaching a language class, it's considered to be contentless. So what are you going to have them write about, English? All right, they write about whatever, okay? You have, to, you have to come up with things to talk about or write about or whatever. Um, however, this, uh, there's still similar things that need to go on. There's a, the notion of authentic, this has already come up, okay? I'm writing for real people who are gonna read it, not just my teacher. In second language, uh, foreign language teaching, that's called authentic communication. Um, and the idea of using a language not just to pass the test, but to actually do it in, in the real world. Uh, which actually comes up to be a huge problem for advanced language learners. How many of you studied language, a foreign language? How many of you speak a foreign language? Look at the hands go down. <laughs> All right. Uh, I've studied five and I speak English and pretty good in Spanish. All right. Why? Because you, classes will only take you so far. All right. Learning grammar. If it was just a question of grammar and vocabulary, my job would be so much simpler. But unfortunately, it is not. Um, Another issue that comes up is mutual point of view. All right, we also mentioned this as well. Um, many uh, academic papers tend to be argumentative. Right? We're supposed to be pushing for a point of view. 
And there are two reasons to do that. Number one, the creation of new knowledge is supposed to be hinging on pushing a particular theory and defending it. Uh, number two, it's a, it's a way of getting students to not copy paste from the internet. Right? If you have to, this is your opinion on X. Um, that's not true in many university systems. All right? um, many university systems actually still actually accept copy paste. That is true in Mexico. Many of my students do not know how to paraphrase, do not know how to do citation. They have no con. They, they confuse citation and quotation. Number one, they say, "Well, it's not. My, it's not their exact words." That's not the point. <laughs> Where is the information coming from? Um, they're also taught they're not supposed to have their own opinions about things. They are not qualified yet until at least graduate school before they're allowed to start having opinions. This is especially true in the hard sciences because after all, if Mr. So-and-so with a doctor title says it's true, who are you to question it? That's a cultural issue. Right, so we run into, so this, you can see the problem that this is going to be uh, caused in creating new content. So what are we going to do? Well, we have some, I've been working since 2007 to try to get around this. When I started, and Annie mentioned that I, uh, I started before the Wikipedia education program, and that's true. Little story. Um, my first experience with it was pretty similar to um, many other professors. Um, I've been living in Mexico for a couple of years, and most people don't know the central part of Mexico City and around it because most people go to Acapulco, Cancun, and if you're from the States, you know the border area. But, of course, Mexico City is the heart and soul of Mexico. The, city, the country is named after the city, not vice versa. Um, so after I lived there for a couple of years, everything started looking the same. You had your church, you had your main plaza, and you had your government, your government palace, they call it. It's always a palace. Um, and I said, well, all these towns can't be the same. So but you go into Wikipedia in English, and even in Spanish, I just had to say, but in English, and all of the articles about Mexico are terrible. Why? Because the information is available only in Spanish. And unless you're bilingual, you don't have access to the information to create or improve the information. So I said, okay, well, you know, I'm kind of getting bored seeing the same thing, so let me start reading. It'll improve my Spanish, because for some reason, I'm very, I'm one of those real weird people who can write better than read and speak better than listen in a foreign language. No one has been able to explain to me why yet, including experts, including the head of my, uh, <coughs> uh, my applied linguistics graduate program who just told me, read more. Oh, thanks. Um, well, if I'm going to put all that effort into it, why don't I have something to show for it? So I'm reading in Spanish, and I'm writing in English. And I've been doing that since 2007, and I have over 430 articles related to, uh, to Mexico and English language Wikipedia to, the, uh, to this. So, but it also made me look. So, I, oh yes, this town has this little festival, and this has this little interesting work about its history and things of that nature. And I found, yes, my read reading ability in Spanish did go up. And remember, I'm con already considered an advanced because I have a degree in Spanish. Therefore, I have advanced Spanish language skills. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, me, but passed the test for a while. Um, <laughs> so, I actually found that this was extremely useful for my development. I prefer to teach advanced learners, and my professional interests are two. One, I like uh, technology to a certain extent. Um, I was born between the non technical computer era and the computer era, I touched my first one when I was 17, so I'm not really, I'm sort of in between the two generations here. Um, so I appreciate it, but every time I have a problem, I have to go screen for someone 20 years younger than me. Um, the second is that um, as someone who has always gotten to the intermediate level and never seemed to quite get too much further than that in the usual classes, I was wondering, well, what's going on? So I've always been pushed on, okay, how do you teach advanced learners? And unfortunately, it should be very different than what we do. We, uh, advanced courses, I don't know about here in Europe, but in the States, they tend to be recycled versions of the, of the lower ones, the reviews. I actually had a whole semester and a half of nothing but grammar from, from the very beginning, including present tense. I'm going, why are, you, why are you wasting my time on present tense grammar when I'm in the third year of Spanish? <laughs> Um, so the idea is, okay, let's find ways of helping students so that they really do uh, improve their language abilities instead of just doing the same thing over and over again. Um, so I had students work in Wikipedia and doing a lot of the same things that I was. 
I had them go in and say, hey, let's look, let's look at some articles on Mexico and see how good they are in English. Because the purpose wasn't to show them how good it was, the purpose was to show them how bad they were. Why? Motivation. Uh, in 2007, I uh, had them go into the music of Mexico. What a trash article that was at that time. But it was an extremely valuable teaching tool. All right? I had them go in and go, what's wrong with this? Oh, did I get lots of, lots of opinions. Good critical reading skills without using that scary term. Yeah, this is missing. What do they have all this stuff about classical music? We don't listen to that. Oh, really? <laughs> Or, oh, they said Norteño and Banda is the same thing. It's not. Well, why don't we talk about how this should be improved? So if nothing else, he said, okay, now you can see just how bad this is. Let's start writing about Mexico in English. Makes sense, right? English class, they should be writing in English, right? No. My students, as I mentioned earlier, do not know what paraphrase is, do not know what citation is, and I got to teach them other things as long as it, it, I'm not teaching a writing course. But in the end, and then you have to have on that the, the, the technology. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so that was problematic. Another problem, grading. My students are used to two plus two equals four on grading. The idea of playing around until you get it right does not compute for these guys, especially in engineers. I my, my apologies to the techs. Okay, they want to make sure that if they do X, they will get Y. Mm. Uh, that, that's a problem too. So we had to work around some of these things. So uh, I've been playing with uh, different ideas. For example, article analysis, the whole thing. OK, take a look at this article. Tell me what's wrong with it. Oh, lots of good opinions about this. How do we make it better? Oh, so now they're thinking. Great. Um, neutral point of view, OK? Um, for, uh, let me give you a Mexico-centric one. I actually did this. Uh, it's, uh, there is a. Um, Cult, I hate to use the term because it's negative, but it's not negative in this case, called Santa Muerte, okay? which Latin literally translates to Saint Death. Right? In Mexico, there is actually a group, uh, it, it's not accepted as a religion per se, but you have a figure that looks like death with the robe, but it's considered female, by the way, it is not considered male, um, which is actually venerated um, in, with Catholic rites. Right? Yeah, like you would any other saint. But it's a, a syncretism between uh, the old pagan <coughs> Mexican thing and currently. That article is not easy to write a neutral point of view because you either love that figure or you hate that figure if you're Mexican. I have one, a shrine to it across the street from my apartment. I think it's really cool. My husband goes <laughs> like this. Uh, he's Mexican, by the way, um, and does not venerate. Um, every so, once in a while, there's a little bit of poking around on this. And I have my students read and I go, do you think it's neutral point of view? Okay, I wrote it. I don't tell them that, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I wrote it because I think, well, I'm, out of, I'm outside of the culture, so we do it. And sometimes we have an analysis on this. Well, this, and, and it's usually minor issues, so now I'm getting them from something that's really obvious to something that requires a little more uh, looking blue and, and then I ask, well, why do you think this way? So, so I'm not, now we're using Wikipedia, we're not editing it, but we're still using Wikipedia for the course content. Um, so for example, one thing I would suggest is if you say, well, I really need my students to do argu some argumentative work, well, have them write their argumentative paper and then have them redo it for, their, for Wikipedia and discuss how it needs to be changed in order to be acceptable to that. Um, discussion and development of article. I don't know of anyone who has done this, but I've talked to a number of people that think that would be an interesting idea. Um, as you know, every, oh, well, maybe you don't know, but every article on Wikipedia, every single version is saved. All they have discussion pages about how the article should or shouldn't be. I don't know of anyone who's done this, but studying how an article develops Maybe something we should be looking into, especially controversial articles, and one really controversial would be global warming. Okay, will the Bar for example, the Barack Obama article, will it look the same as it does now in 10 years from now? I bet you it won't, all right? Um, so this is the kind of thing, especially those in the social sciences may want to discuss. Does it reflect the argument that's going outside of Wikipedia or not? I'm gonna guess yes, to a certain, with some, some, with some quirks. Um, comparative rhetoric. Um, one thing I did or was not taught, as in undergrad in Spanish, was writing academic English is not the same as writing academic Spanish. 
They're very different. Things that are considered peacock terms, how many of you are familiar with what that means? Peacock term is basically when you say, this is wonderful, and you're not supposed to do that in Wikipedia. Oh, but what's considered a peacock term in English is not necessarily a peacock term in Spanish. They, they allow things that we don't um, as, as proof. For example, so-and-so says this is true. Well, then it must be true. You would not, that doesn't fly in English, but it does fly to a certain extent in Spanish. So these are things that we can talk about. So when we are talk about doing translation, I had my students doing translation. Two reasons for that. Number one, uh, actually three reasons. Number one, they don't have the skills to write academic English. All right? um, so I don't have them translate Spanish to English. I have them do it the other way around. Of course, they say, well, why? You're teaching an English class. Well, because, well, one, they can't do it. Number two, unfortunately, Spanish Wikipedia is nowhere near as good as English Wikipedia. It has only a, not even a quarter of the articles. Most of those articles have no citations in them, and you would not believe the amount, unfortunately, of plagiarism that is accepted in Spanish language Wikipedia. So I don't have them do it because then the English language community is going to go wah on them, and we don't want that. So I have them do it the other way around. It's actually easier. Um, and it, it's a little bit on the safer side. Uh, the second reason is that it teaches them how to write the articles. For example, if you're translating a good article, not a bad article, if I find good articles, um, and they get the sense, oh, okay, first paragraph is a summary, second paragraph should be like this, and I tend to stick to things like biographies and uh, company, uh, company, um, companies, because they're easier to see the structure. If you do something that's a little more abstract, it gets a little bit harder, there's more play with it, so it gets a little bit of a good thing. But it, it gives them a good start about what to do, and also the, te the, te the technological part aspect of it. If they're, just if they're just copying it from the edit from the edit, they just copy all of that that's garbage, all right? And then once they're done translating the text, I help them with the technological aspect of it. Okay. So as I mentioned here, the translation using art and language articles for sources. Um, the, the translation, again, is basically to get them familiar with how Wikipedia writing should be. And in and of itself, um, there is uh, obviously benefit for foreign language students about translation. Even if they're not a foreign language student, um, they're, they're dealing with the content. If you can do translation, obviously not everybody has that option. It's, it's kind of nice to do. And you can do it the other way around. You have a Spanish class here in English, have them write, uh, have them write stuff uh, from Spanish into English. If they can't do translation, do what I'm doing right now, using Spanish language sources to write English language Wikipedia articles. Um, obviously, they're not going to be translating, but they're still going to be taking information from language, one language and putting it into another. Um, intercultural communication. Wikipedia, I've, I've given presentations and written about this. Wikipedia is a foreign culture. Right? It is a foreign culture. What's a culture? It is a set of values and norms. That is its base. It's not art. It's not music. It's a set of values. What gets you in trouble living in a foreign country is not listening to music or looking at art pieces. It's not knowing when you're supposed to sit down. It's not knowing whether you're supposed to kiss somebody or not. Uh, after nine years in Mexico, I still will not kiss students, even though it's, it's expected on the cheek, not on the mouth. <laughs> Why? Because now, we've had too many problems in the States with students kissing and more. Um, <laughs> and so to me, it just doesn't seem right. Um, so um, you have to learn what the values and norms are of the culture in order to be able to communicate in it. All right? when, do you, when do you use usted and when do you use to? I still don't know. All right? So I just use usted for everybody and just wait for them to, to correct me. Um, Wikipedia has its values and norms. And most of the problems we've talked about with new Wikipedians, with the old Wikipedians, is because they're, they're, they're violating all these values and norms. Um, so I, when I have students work with Wikipedia, I actually teach it to them as a culture. Um, and they have to learn how to get around it. Um, another thing that I've had them do is contact organizations and people for Wikipedia projects. This photo right here is a, um, a performing duo from Canada called them Plume. And last year, I had a group of students, a small group of students doing independent study with me, doing nothing but Wikipedia projects for their advanced English. 
And one of the projects we had was with the Festival Internacional Cervantino, which is an international music festival, it's the largest one in Mexico. And what we decided to do is that we were going to work on articles on the artists that were appearing in the 2011 version. And we had contacted the Festival Cervantino. They gave us links to their press releases and things like that. Um, we also contacted artists to try to get photos from, for, from them in order to put in Wikipedia. We had pretty good response from the foreign, and by foreign I mean outside of Mexico, foreign artists. We had no luck with any of the Mexican artists. Because as soon as I said uh, uh, free license, boom, that was it. They want to control that image. All right, the, the publicity aspect, that, that didn't even compute. All right, so that's a cultural thing that I have to work on and still in Mexico. For, uh, we had, we gotten photos from, let's see, Canada. I think we had one from England. A, uh, he's an Israeli violinist whose name I can't, Tokachi or something like that. Young guy, he's actually Israeli, but he lives in England. Um, and we got from, I can't remember the other one, that I can't think of it off the top of my head right now. But they were writing emails and contacting artists to, to ask them to, to donate photographs. All right. So this is very good. This is very good for my Mexican students who are much more social. They want that social component in their learning. Okay. So social component, writing is discourse. Um, traditionally, writing, especially academic writing, I'm an academic writing teacher, have been since the 90s. I've taught both native and non-native speakers uh, writing. And one of the things that we teach, at least in the States nowadays, is that you're, you're supposed to be thinking about it as a discourse, not as I write this and then it goes, and it goes over here and there's nothing. You're supposed to be writing as if the reader can actually return uh, uh, something back to you. Again, that goes back to argumentative writing. In Wikipedia, it is discourse because somebody can go in and change it, or somebody can comment on it. So the idea here is that um, you can use Wikipedia to promote this idea of writing as discourse. Um, international Network of Collaborators. I actually am pushing GLAM very heavily amongst my thing. For those of you who don't know, GLAM is Galleries, Libraries, Archives, and Museums. That's the initiative of program in Wikimedia to uh, involve cultural institutions in helping the, uh, improve Wikipedia. Um, there are many, many, of course, in the States. And since my students tend to be much more social rather than sitting and working at home on, on assignments, they don't like that. Um, I try to uh, help them do th things that would uh, be more suitable for them. Um, this semester, I am not teaching a course, a traditional course. Um, what I am doing right now is I work with students from what's called the International Baccalaureate Program. Um, how many of you are familiar with what that is? Oh good, I don't have to explain it. You do know that they have a what's called the CAS requirement, basically is a community service requirement of 80 hours. Well, I convinced my school that Wikipedia should be considered a CAS option. And uh, yeah, think about it. They can do anything and get their CAS hours. So they can choose what they want to work on. You don't have to worry about grading, okay? They just have to do, do the work. So what we've been doing, that we started this last semester as a pilot with seven students. Um, we worked in my language lab, I was the language lab coordinator. That didn't work out very well because we wanted, uh, it turned out it was hard to focus when the, they were doing one thing and all the other students were doing something else. So this semester, the library has given us a study room that's ours four days a week uh, during the afternoons. And when we are, the only people in that room are Wikipedians working on Wikipedia assignments. So hopefully we're going to get a banner hopefully soon, um, bureaucracy. Um, but the idea here is to give students uh, more options. So one of the options that I've given them, since I have been working on GLAM projects, I have contacts with a number of organizations, including um, the Salon de la Plastica Mexicana, which translates to Hall of Mexican Fine Arts. This is basically an old boys club for artists, but don't tell them I said that. Um, <laughs> it was started in 1949 to promote Mexican contemporary art. Uh, has 400 members, past and present. Um, most of them are, I think the youngest one I've met so far is my age, so it tells you something. Um, but almost none of them have articles in, in either English or Spanish Wikipedia. If you look up the Salon de la Plastica Mexicana in English Wikipedia, at the bottom, there's a table of um, all the all the members and most of them are in red. So I had contact with them and they're going to help us put together the information and get the images. 
uh, for this. So now I have students that are working with this. A second one is called Uriarte Talavera. Talavera is a very fine um, pottery made in Puebla. We get invitations to museum openings, show openings, things of that nature. I offer my students the opportunity to go to these things. Last Thursday, I had a student, um, his name is Arturo, I, and I, there was an opening of the, the Talavera in a very, very swanky uh, department store called Palacio de Hierro in a swanky kind of town called Polanco, and we were invited. So I said, okay, you want to come with? He says, yeah, let me tell my mother. Said, okay, fine, 16 years old, okay? We get, we get to the, we get to the event. I said, well, I'll introduce him to a couple of people. And, you know, he'll, that'll be nice, good, good, good experience for the 16-year-old kid. The 16-year-old kid spent the rest of the night working the room like a pro. <laughs> he got himself, he, at the beginning of the show, he sat himself in the middle in the VIP slot next to this uh, Leonardo Nierman, a noted artist, and next to him was the manager of the department store, and he's chatting away with them the whole time. My husband and I are in the back going, holy moly. <laughs> We definitely want to be taking advantage of that kid, okay? Without a doubt. He's definitely going to be doing some land projects for the rest of his uh, community service uh, things going on here. Um, <laughs> so, um, Wikipedia is community, so the idea here is that when you use foreign language, you're supposed to be integrating in the community. That's actually true for any discipline. In order to become a physicist, you have to talk like a physicist. In order to be uh, an, economic, uh, an economics person, you have to talk economics. So the idea here is to get students to learn how to adapt themselves into particular communities that they're looking to do. And Wikipedia does that. It's not just the general editing population you have to deal with and sometimes negotiate with and sometimes fight with, okay? Then we have the obvious ones of uh, getting them to work with um, cultural institutions or other, or other institutions along this line. Other ideas. We always talk about writing, writing articles. Is that all we should be doing? No, obviously not. Um, this is all so new and there's so many possibilities. These are just things I wanted to throw out in order to um, get people thinking. Photography, okay, digital, digital animation. We have a digital animation department in my school. Why couldn't they be involved working with Wikipedia, okay? Um, other technical projects, I'm not a techie. Okay. I know we have tons of things that need to be done. Why aren't we reaching out to technical and programming departments and things of that nature? Um, outside the classroom, just be, we shouldn't only just be, okay, course credit for this class. Okay, let's look at, let's look at Wikipedia clubs. Let's look at giving them some kind of credit for stuff. Um, the International Baccalaureate, which I've been focused on very heavily because it has been very nice. And you avoid some of the problems with uh, assessment with this but you're still giving them valuable. More ideas, okay. We now have a new portal for education in our uh, outreach. Um, if you go into outreach.linkedmedia.org, on the left-hand side, there's actually links to both of these in education. Um, the idea here is to make uh, information about who's doing what much more accessible than it has been in the past. Um, I'm particularly involved in getting the newsletter. The first newsletter went out, uh, the first wiki newsletter went out for education. Uh, last August 15th. The next one will be next August 15th. We welcome uh, su um, not subscriptions. Um, contributions. Hmm? contributions, please. Okay, I don't want to be the only one writing for it, please. All right, we want the idea for this particular newsletter is that everybody gets a chance to talk about what they're doing, no matter how big or how small, so that everybody else can browse through it and say, hey, what a great idea. Maybe I should work on that. Um, and that's my presentation. I'm proud to tell you, what's in it for you? <laughs> I'm sorry, I really thought that was the end of it. Okay, uh, just really quick, this photo is one of my students this semester. Actually, he's Colombian, but studying in Mexico. And this is Iris Atma, or Iris Atma, okay? She is a professional artist and writer who is from the Salon de la Plastica Mexicana. She's, she's actually doing a social service or community service with them, working with us to help create the articles for the Salon de la Plastica Mexicana. So we now have a professional helping us with the content area because I'm no pro in, in, in art. What's in it for you? I will tell you what's been, been in it for me. Okay, number one, it has given me a niche at my university. Okay, everybody knows who I am. I'm the Wikipedia teacher, all right? My boss's bosses are very happy with me. 
okay? Why are they happy with me? Because I got students talking to actor, uh, television personalities, I've got students talking to the head of the Palacio de Hiero sitting in the front of the VIP slot, um, among other things. Um, so I, I now do something that nobody else does, and I haven't yet convinced anybody else on the campus. I'm convincing someone down in Tabasco to, to do it. Number two, research opportunities. I know there's been some research done on Wikipedia, but as I mentioned earlier, why aren't we researching how articles get developed? Okay. Um, so there may be the alternative traditional research published. Not all of us um, for our career paths need or want to do traditional publishing. Um, first of all, I find it a lot of work and maybe five people will read it. Whereas if I write a Wikipedia article, I know lots of people are going to read it. Plus, um, um, it, my school doesn't require it. So how do I make myself distinct? Well, here we go. Networking. I have met so many people from so many different walks of life. I'm just an English teacher. But I know people from various walks of life now with cultural things, um, including people from the um, various government agencies now in Mexico. And of course, when I tell people, oh yeah, I know people in the Smithsonian, wow, okay? <laughs> um, works out very nice, good publicity, both for yourself and your institution, if, it, if it's done right. My school is very big on publicity. All right, now I'm finished. <laughs> Thank you very much. We've heard mentioned that um, some people at the back are having trouble hearing questions oh. from the front. So we have oh. uh, roving microphones. I don't know if anyone wants to have any roving No. <laughs> I don't know whether that's on or off. So do we have any questions for me? Yes. Okay, um, I was interested that you were talking about the uh, International Baccalaureate, and that also made me think of some of the comments you made about people being a bit too reverential to um, kind of some of the teachers. Uh, has there been, have you thought of taking up the theory of knowledge strand of the, uh, the International Baccalaureate? Because that seems to me to be particularly relevant to Wikipedia and how people interact with Wikipedia as a source of knowledge. What's interesting is that I'm not an IB teacher. I'm trying to get myself into that program, okay? Um, I teach on the, what's called the professional side or the university side of things, and I'm working with the IB uh, students. The interesting thing for me with the IB students um, is that they've been taught how to do synthesis and citation, so I don't have to start with that. So that's my main happiness with these guys. Um, plus the fact that I get 80 hours of their time, well, up to 80 hours of their time to work with, okay, so, and, and we can be a little bit more uh, flexive, and they also have an international perspective, obviously. Um, no, I, uh, eventually I hope once I get myself into teaching one of those classes that I will definitely work along those lines. Other questions? No? Oh. Um, hi, I'm curious as to what you find you talked about not being very willing or especially engaged in writing in English. Were there things that triggered a willingness to write? I found that um, in English, people working at something being very badly written will actually say, I can do better than that. Of right. course I can do better than that. Are, have you found that with particularly badly written English, you're actually getting a response of, you know, even I can do better than that? Do you get that? I get that. I get that. Well, it's very easy with Mexican topics because content-wise, that's not an issue. Um, and of course, they know their culture. And but that was what really prompted me to start working with students in Wikipedia in the first place was because I know that there's so much that needs to be written. Um, I moved away a little bit from that because of the problems that I've talked about. Um, however, um, many of the students actually not only say that I can do better than that, but I'm also getting, I am learning stuff about my own culture doing, doing this work because I didn't, they didn't know who half the names were or things of that nature. Um, it, it is, a, it is a, a motivator for um, people who want to say, hey, you should really promote who you are to the rest of the world. Yes. What's the institutional attitude to Wikipedia in the Mexican system? Is it seen as something toxic to be avoided? You mentioned the fake business once you have an administration. 
Um, it isn't toxic in the sense of what I've dealt with in the States, in the sense of you get uh, academics to say, Wikipedia, which I've dealt with with my old master's program. I've been trying to get people from my old master's program to get involved in the linguistics and a lot of the translation issues. Um, and I'm still getting this, now that's below us type thing. Um, in the Mexican system, um, they like the publicity aspect of this. My, from, I'll talk about my school. They, uh, the fact that I'm here, okay, is a huge help when I go back there. Because now I've come over and talked about my school in England. Okay, that's a big deal for these guys, okay? Um, so the, uh, the attitude with Wikipedia is, yeah, we really, like, we really like the benefits as long as the students don't, don't complain too much. <laughs> Um, I think I need to preface my question with a little explanation for people who are not familiar with the five pillars of Wikipedia, which is to say the main guidelines for Wikipedia, one of which is no original research. And um, I, I was intrigued by the fact that uh, some of you students have been in touch with artists to get uh, photos. And uh, this is something I've worked with my students on. It's similar. And the debate comes whether uh, any contact then with, with the subject that you're writing about constitutes original research. And uh, uh, um, I'm wondering how, how you've been thinking about this or whether you know, that wasn't part of the equation at all for you. No, it wasn't part of the equation because it's like I figured as long as my students are sticking to the things that they're reading and putting only that into their uh, articles, that really shouldn't be an issue. Now, will it, will it cause bias? Perhaps they may decide not to put something negative in there, and that may be something to think about. But none of the articles we worked on for this particular project had anything negative in the sources that we used, because if we had a hard enough time finding information, enough information, um, that's more of an issue than whether or not we're dealing with original research. Anything else?